Hey, what's up Blender users, I'm Jonathan and today's video is finally going to update this video in which I talked about how one can use Mantaflow to fill any object in Blender with liquid. The technique I showed you there doesn't work all of the time in newer Blender versions. So with that said, let me show you how we can work around some of the bugs in Blender 2.91 and onward. Oh and by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. And with that said, let's get started. When following the old tutorial, you might see that if you set the object you want to fill to a collision object and then bake, no fluid particles will be created. I'm still not sure why this is the case, but it has to do with the solidify modifier. For example, when reducing the edge thickness and adjusting the domain's size, we should be able to get fluid particles created, also in the newer Blender versions. But of course, this is not a really good method, because it just is really unreliable. You sometimes have to fiddle around with your domain settings for minutes until you get the desired result. And when wanting to do bigger scenes with different fluid objects, there is just no way this can work. So let me show you a workaround and how we can create this render I showed you earlier. Basically for this to work, we just need to open our object. If you know how your scene will end up, this won't be much of an issue. For example, with this simple torus scene, we can open up this part right here, because the torus will only be filled up to this point. But I want to show you this on a more advanced example. So let's create a new Blender scene and start working. For this video, I want to fill my initials with fluid. So let's start by deleting everything and let's create a simple text object with J and K as the letters. I want to change the alignment to center and rotate it 90 degrees on the x-axis so the letters are standing up. Now I of course want some geometry, so let's extrude our text by a little bit. To make this work even better, I want to scale our text by 2. I sometimes feel like Blender has a much easier time simulating large scale scenes than scenes on a very small scale. And now after assigning a font we like, we can already convert it to a mesh. So let's choose Ctrl A Visual Geometry to Mesh and you can see that the mesh has been generated. Let's separate the J and the K. We can do this by going P, separate by loose parts. But you can see that there were more than two loose parts. This is of course not what we want. So let's go back with Ctrl Z, choose M, merge by distance, and now P by loose parts. We now have the letters separated. For this video, I will only do the letter K, but the same principles apply to all of them. Firstly, I want some better geometry. So let's select the Remesh modifier, choose Sharp and an according Octree Depth. 6 works fine in my case. We can now apply the Solidify modifier and make it go outwards. You can see that because of the special geometry it doesn't work in these cases. Let's try the complex mode and you can see it worked a lot better, but there's still some cleanup we have to do. Nonetheless, we have to apply both of these modifiers because we want to open up our K at the top. So, when hovering over the modifier, we can Ctrl A to apply them. And now we can go into edit mode to refine the boundary. First of all, let's select all of this and delete these faces and do the same for these ones. This face loop right here can also be deleted and later we will connect these edges together. But before this, let's delete these faces right here. And let's worry about this right here, because the fluid will collide with this piece that is reaching inside the K, and we do not want this. So let's go ahead, hover about the inner part of the K and select L and H. This way we are only left with everything that was created by the Solidify modifier. And now let's select one face right here, press O and move this upwards. If we now go Alt H, we can see what we are doing. We are moving this piece of geometry away from the inner K, but it has to go to the right a little bit. So let's hide this again and move it. Now we need to do the same thing down here, because this was moved into the K. Great, now we have our boundary ready. This doesn't need to be near perfect, because nobody will see this in the end. Now we can select these edge loops right here and search for bridge edge loops and do the same for these ones right here. Now let's set up our fluid simulation. I want the fluid to be emitted by a sphere, so I'll add one, move it on top to about right here and duplicate it to the other hole. Search for quick liquid 
And now let's adjust the domain to our needs. For simulations it is always important to apply the scale. It just helps most of the time when there are any errors. I always like to choose a relatively high value for sampling substeps. This will make the simulation more precise. I also want to choose inflow and choose the same settings for the other sphere. Now we can select the K, choose fluid effector, leave it at collision and also give it a high sampling substeps value. For the bake type I like to use modular as well as make it resumable. And now we are going to go with a resolution of 64. Let's try to bake it. And we can see that the fluid particles are being created correctly and they are also colliding with the K. Great, we can now simulate everything. Great, as you can see everything is working correctly. There are some particles that are going out, but these few won't matter at all. Of course, at a certain point, the latter will start to overflow, so you will have to end your fluid simulation right here. At the start of the tutorial I should have made a backup of the letter I created because now we are left with this mess but we can easily clean it up. Let's move both of the letters into their own collection and I will name this collection Collider. And now we can select this K, duplicate it, move it back to the main collection and remove the fluid component. With slash we can isolate the geometry and now in edit mode we can select this as well as this face loop, delete it and with L, select all of the outer geometry. We are now left with our original K and with Alt click on one edge we can select this edge loop and fill it with F and do the same for this one. And now with just a simple solidify modifier that goes a little bit outward, we can give this K a glass material and get the same result as in the previous video on this topic. Of course, to give our fluid simulation a proper material, we still need to bake the mesh. We can easily do this by enabling mesh right here and clicking on bake mesh. And just like this, everything worked. There's just one thing and this is that the particles that slipped out can be deleted using a boolean modifier. But I showed you this in my previous video, as well as the setup of the materials I used. So I linked you the part of this video in the info card that should pop up right now. And yeah, that's basically it. This is how we can fill objects with liquids in newer versions in Blender. Once this bug has been fixed, I will probably notify you again. But until then, we will see each other in the next video next Saturday. <laughs>